Hello and welcome to another episode of Barrel Banter, the show where we gather around after a long day's work, have a sip or two of whiskey, talk about it, and anything else that's on our mind. And what are we drinking today? Today we've got Templeton Rye, All right. which has a great backstory, and we're going to talk about that. I have. Have we all had Templeton Rye? Yep. yep. I have not. I have not. Oh, I have. Uh, we got some virgins over yeah. here. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. So well, hopefully, it's a good stuff. So, what are you guys smelling? Besides heat, Fire. I get a little bit of Fire. fruitiness. It does smell a little on the sweet side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some caramel. Yeah. Got a good flavor. It's definitely got a lot of rye character. Right. Yeah, um, yeah I'm smelling caramel and mm-hmm. cinnamon. Hmm. Yeah, this is this is really smooth. It's very smooth. It's uh, does have a little heat. Got a yeah. lot of rye character. You know what though? I'm not feeling a lot of heat in my mouth. It's no. more like right, right about there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it it falls off it really quickly. It does. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, there's really nothing that lingers. The heat lingers mm-hmm. more than any of the taste, any of the notes that I'm experiencing, right. but it's like, it's and quick. It, it comes and then goes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it kind of finishes kind of hot, and then it just kind of falls off. Well, when I've had this before, I've yeah. usually had it with a little bit of ice. So mm. Okay. Tames that heat I'll a little bit. That. Okay, so their backstory is that this is a resurrection of a uh, Prohibition era. Um, rye recipe that was developed in Templeton, Iowa, and that uh, was Al Capone's favorite and that uh, descendants of uh, some of the bootleggers have resurrected the brand. Interesting. Which is a great branding backstory. Yeah. Why, yeah. why do you say that? Well, because it's actually purchased in bulk from a company called um, Midwestern Grain Products in Indiana. Mmm, delicious. That makes... Um, <laughs> rye whiskey from a 95% rye recipe and sells it to uh, blenders, to uh, distiller, small distilleries that need to supplement their uh, production. Uh, it sounds like they might as well be called Acme Whiskey. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much, they, uh, Midwestern there, they do not actually make anything under their own name. Wow. They're strictly a production facility for other people. So who else do they sell? Rye whiskey too. Uh, Bullet. Um, wow. Uh, high. Was it High Western? High Western. Something like that. Um, Bullet is like very yeah. popular. And Bullet so. makes their own bourbon, mm-hmm. but but their rye their rye is, is being purchased. Which I actually like their rye. Yeah. It turns out uh, they got sued for their backstory. Oh, and really? this is what happens, yeah, when you go a little too nuts on your branding backstory there. Interesting. Um, this used to say small batch. It used to say um, from uh, distilled from a Prohibition era uh, recipe or something to that extent. Now it's inspired by. Wow. Oh. And they actually add um, some flavorings to this. So technically it's a flavored whiskey. Really? And to your point, it says here right on the back of the of the bottle here on the label on the bottom it says, "This bottle of Templeton Rye is based on the original Prohibition on, era exactly. recipe." Mm-hmm. So they do a good job. And there's three paragraphs here. The first two paragraphs are all about the history, and kind of corroborating what um, Craig was just saying: the 1920s, now Capone, and the Prohibition era. But then at the very bottom, it's like, eh, it's based on that. Um, yeah. it's, not, it's not technically that. It's not that. technically that. Well, Which, let, let's talk about that, the fine line between a brand's story and telling tall tales. Yeah. Like, well, outright fabrications. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about it. What, uh, what goes into telling a good brand story, be it fiction or nonfiction? Well, either way, it needs to evoke emotion. You want to get an emotional response exactly. out of your customer or potential customers. Right. And I... I believe that the more truth there is to it, and yeah, you can mm-hmm. embellish, but everything should be based on truth and fact. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And you know, you look at social media, everyone is building themselves up to look bigger and better right. than they oh, really yeah. are. So that's a given. But just outright fabrication, again, that's where you, you that's know, where you get, get into, sued. Right. Yeah, that's where you get into trouble. Right. And in this day and age, 
you can't pull the wool over anyone's eyes no, anymore. No. I mean, everything has to be transparent. Otherwise, you'll be called out for it, and your brand and your company will yep. uh, be affected by that. Yep. With the age of the internet, anyone can jump on Google, do their research, and find out find all, the out all kinds details. of things. Yep. Which I yeah, I found out about this. It was because I really like it. <laughs> and with that said, it's um, brand stories are have never been more important. They've never been more prevalent than than today because of the internet, because of content, because mm -hmm. everyone's because every company and brand is are constantly trying to push out a message, be it a blog post, be it an, a billboard advertisement, being um, photographs on their Facebook page or promotional videos. They're they're constantly pushing out there um, one form or another um, a, a piece of content that reflects their brand story. Right, which, which to that point I've noticed it's very important it seems for them to be consistent. You don't want people, even a brand ambassador, like deviating right. from yeah, their you brand You don't want them getting off, so off uh, right. message. It, yeah. And it's one thing to have um, strategies and a an approach to how you're marketing a certain product, but it's, it's all gotta be wrapped up in this overarching yeah. You know, it all goes hand in hand yeah. with uh, yeah. what we were talking about last week, the uh, user experience. And, and, yep. and some line, of this... So. Um, but to the credit of Templeton Rye, this is delicious. Mm -hmm. They didn't yeah. need all that. No. no. It's, no. It's, it's a great story, but you know, like Craig was saying, they had to go through lawsuits to, to, yeah. to kind of reclaim their name. Yeah. Right. And it hurt their sales considerably right and if you just I mean like I said you don't need to the the liquor speaks for itself yeah, you know, yeah. do some good branding on the flavor right do some, a yeah. little more than the story right. Right. Wait, what's their price point um, this is high 20s typically I find it mid to high 20s that's, that's not bad, bad for a ride no, no. I, I've not been at all. rolling through Bedma seeing rise at like $55 oh yeah so no it's got a good price point and uh, because of all the issues they wound up with, apparently they are building a distillery mm. in Templeton, Iowa. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so they got caught, now they can do it right. That's the latest thing, yeah, <laughs> that they got caught and they're going to do it right. Well, I'm sure they've got the money. It's now. unfortunate they didn't start out doing it right, right or start out doing, you know, or start, build a distillery and then maybe supplement their right, right, right. stuff, which a lot of brewers and a lot of distillers, I should say, do. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. All right, well, as we wrap up uh, this episode, let's uh, go around the table here and give our final impressions. Caleb, what are you thinking? You know, I'm not a huge rye fan myself, but, you know, this thing's, you know, after I open it up a little bit, it's pretty tasty overall. Um, it's, it's pretty sweet, and, of course, that heat is kind of falling off now that I'm mm -hmm. kind of drinking more of it. But I would give it, like, a three, just because I'm not a huge, you know, rye whiskey drinker myself. Okay. But it's, Drinkable for sure. Kyle? Yep, I'd probably agree. I like rice. I prefer rice, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd give it. A, I was gonna give it a three, but I give it a three point five. There you go. <laughs> um, I'm I'm similar. I, I prefer rice. Um, this is really good. It's really smooth. It's been a while since I've had Templeton mm -hmm. rye, um, and since we've tried all these various whiskeys over the past couple months, um, it's really made me appreciate the smooth. Um, rise that we haven't really had that much of so no. um, because of that I'm gonna go with a solid four for this one I think I'd probably go three and a half I'm a, now that I know the some of the backstory I'm, I'm having a harder time being objective <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do enjoy it it's it's before I knew any of that I really liked it <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to go a solid three and a half as well um, I love rye. I've had some really, really good rye, and that's probably to the detriment of tasting this. Um, but what I do like about it is the price point, and I like how accessible it is for you know people who aren't um, that familiar with rye. We need an introduction. This is a great yeah. starter. It's great. Like dive right in. Definitely has good rye character. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's a little sweeter than most rye. It's not quite as dry, but. Mm -hmm. It gives you a great, you know, it's like a crash course on rye. So how so many barrels? I give it three and a half. Three and a half. Solid, but a solid three and a half. Three and a half. It's not shaky. So between a three and a four. So mm -hmm. there you go. Yep. All right. So we All right. will uh, catch you next week.
Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.